Okay, and welcome to today's client Q&A, which is a bit of an ad, ad hoc, ad lib, new version of today's thing. We decided to go a bit rogue with this one today. I'm going to give you a live critique and live review of one of our actual clients who's just completed their second set of assessments. So we're going to take you through like what we saw from the original assessments. Uh, we're going to dissect it, saying how we wrote the program. And then we're going to say what we saw on the results, which have just come in in the last couple of days. And we're going to discuss about it and see what we're going to do with the next plans moving forward. So give you an insight into like the interview, interviews, not interviews, meetings we have behind the scenes here that we have with every client who does their sets of assessments. And we can go forward. Because the idea is that we always, it's getting people to self-assess. Then we discuss the assessments as part of a team to build the program moving forward. And we discuss as part of a team afterwards, make sure what we did as I spilled my tea everywhere, uh, work <laughs> didn't work and discuss accordingly. So today is all about the case study of uh, Rayhan Khan, who's part of a high performance program for cricket. So quick backdrop onto this. Rayhan is 40 years old. He's a male. His bio, he's, a, he's basically a cricketer who plays for a very high standard out in Saudi Arabia, um, plays two to three times a week. And he wants to be more explosive on the field, recover quickly and drop some body fat. Now, the cool thing here was he is actually working with a coach, a kettlebell coach on some kettlebell stuff before coming to us. So he had some kettlebell experience uh, and he had some basic experience with food tracking. So he dabbled a little bit of that. So it, was, it ended up being quite a useful uh, basis for what we could work with moving forward. We didn't have to teach him any of this stuff beforehand. And also, he's a cricketer, so he loves data, and he, he's quite geeky because all cricketers love data and they love stats uh, when it comes to their training. So it was quite a good mix of people coming to us in uh, the high performance program. That's that's why we did the full set of assessments, uh, not the mini assessments, the full set of assessments uh, with him accordingly. But here's a big red flag that came up on his uh, pre medical checklist. He had plantar fasciitis for fifteen years. Uh, 15 years. What, what else did he say about that? Josh, what, was, what, what else was his, his comments about his plantar fasciitis? Um, so obviously it was like, as you say, an ongoing um, issue for the last 15 years. He'd seen uh, podiatrists. He tried orthotics. Um, I'm trying to read my scruffy notes that I always take here when I have uh, calls going back. I've written Echo Shoes. Has anyone heard of Echo Shoes? You might yeah, have said he wore they, Echo Shoes. They, they sold them in Clarks for years. Ah, right. Okay. So he, um, had he, he wore Echo Shoes. <laughs> uh, and it seemed to be better when he was barefoot. That's what uh, that's what that, that's what he told me. He'd had more flare-ups since he'd weighed a little bit he'd more. He'd put on some weight, and that had made it made his flare-ups um a little bit worse when he traveled again. I guess sitting more made it worse as well. So that was his uh, that was his major uh, major issue. Exactly. I should have said actually as well. He he was a, he works uh, at a very high IT uh, and finance company uh, as in Saudi Arabia for the oil companies out there as well. So he, he was under quite a lot of pressure with work uh, and everything else out there too. So he was quite a, an interesting mix all around. But I haven't put it on the slides. But after the end of twelve weeks, uh, his plantar fasciitis has disappeared. Uh, luck, uh, good bit of training, coaching, whatever it is, the point is it has now disappeared and he's a very happy client with us on more ways than one. Would you say that, Josh? That's, that's a fair assumption. Then. I would I would say he is very happy. It hasn't 100% gone. I'm not an absolute magician. <laughs> um, it, he does still get it a little bit when he's sprinting, but his he recovers very quickly from it. He doesn't have like, it used to take him out for a, couple of days he'd be like hobbling two or three days now if it flares up it's very quick he recovers quickly from it and, and his flare-ups are much few and far between now like like i said mainly when sprinting um so day-to-day -day life it's pretty much gone cool um, yeah that's good thanks for that so the question is what did we do what did we do with ray when he first came to us so let's dive into exactly what we did uh, and as always uh we assessed uh, when, particularly with a high-performance client who goes through the full set of assessments, we assess to see where he's at on the spectrum. So let me just uh, minimize that. Let me pull up uh, Rianne's first set of results from all the way back when on here. So again, when he did the self-assessments, we always, the first thing we look at um, with anything else at all, we go to the score. We don't look at anything else. We go straight to the score and see what the scores on the doors had to say right now. So very quickly, 
29% isn't the best score in the world. Now, we'll caveat that with the cardio side of things because um, we couldn't get him to do the walk test. So most people score at least something on the cardio test, but he couldn't score anything on the walk test because he couldn't walk. His plantar fasciitis was stopping him from doing so, which probably is the first person ever not to do it, Josh, would you say? Yep. Yep. I've never um, had a client not at least not do the walk test. Exactly. But when it, literally when he joined us, he was going through a flare up at that exact moment. So couldn't do it. Yeah. So it's, it's just worth knowing this. So there is, there are, you know, the score system is great as a starting point at all, but remember there's, there's, there's problems with this. Now he did do the rowing test, which we'll go into in a second, but he scored quite poorly, hence his 0% on the whole thing. But overall, we're seeing lots of things happening here um, going on. So the scores on the doors quite quickly. We know straight away that health is a bit of a priority uh, in terms of this, as well as movement and maybe cardio, the strength. As you'll see, we didn't go to 2.2, but the point is that strength is a bit skew with You can't really take too much into that into, into the equation right now, but we can with the other three. So 29% was the stores on the doors, and that's what we started with. So let's look up into health. Uh, this is what we had straight away. So if you look into health in the scoring system here, straight away, if you look from top to bottom, there's three reds and quite a few embers. Josh, you want to talk us through this a little bit? Uh, so, yeah, so obviously, you know, we always start at the top. Breath hold, you can see that's in red. So straight away, that would be like, that's your first priority to go after. Resting heart rate and active heart rate are amber. They're, they're okay, could be better, but, you know, not, you know, a, a, an absolute priority straight away. Sleep is okay. Steps are pretty darn good. He's close to 10,000 there. So although it's amber, it's pretty pretty good. And then you obviously look at weight. Um, and he said in his consultation he wants to lose some body fat, so uh, weight loss uh, helping, especially because he's a high performance client as well. He's a cricketer. You want to you want him to be closer into the hundred, uh, the, the formula, which is obviously height in centimeters minus a hundred. Um, so we want him to fit close to that formula. So weight loss was, of course, a priority. Yeah, absolutely. Again, straight away. So if he wants to be more explosive in the field, recover faster. So st straight away, like Josh said, our top two priority, all our priorities are right there in red for us. This is why yeah. the benefit of the system is here. It's like we can see straight away, breath hold test. Well, he needs to improve his breathing because it's, it's part of the whole cardiovascular system to help us recover <laughs> faster in between these short back to sprints that he does. And then straight away, body weight and body fat, you know, body weight, body fat. He's in red. He's definitely not in the performance area for weight in terms of play, being a cricketer. And also his body fat is so high. He's never going to be explosive um, or fast enough with, with that high body fat. That's, that's the number one priority. No matter what else he does, you know, you yeah. want to create some fancy program. Body fat is the number one priority if you want to help him perform better on the field. Yeah. I mean, with anyone anyway, a uh, breath test would be a priority with that score whenever whenever it's a red in our algorithm it's something to fix but especially with Rehan and the fact that like I said in my I'm going back to my notes he's told me he wants to recover quicker he's a cricketer wants to recover quicker well then my god we've got to we've got to look at the breath straight away then so top priority exactly so that was all we had to begin with and so okay right so we know straight away uh breath and uh he's a fat loss client is he it's as simple as that. We know, you know, that's our biggest priority. So let's go into layer one movement. Uh, let's go top to bottom. As you see here already, let's just scan down the page. Lots of reds. Lots of reds, a couple of greens, but mostly reds. So again, we're looking uh, from top to bottom uh, in terms of cricketing, particularly as a batsman. And as a batsman, you need to be balanced at the crease, they call it. So having balance is key. There's a massive asymmetry here, left and right. His balance is okay. It's about 15 seconds on his left, but right side, it's eight seconds. You know, we're not just looking for the for the red stuff in red. We're looking for uh, asymmetries as well. So straight away, there's something off of this balance system. And then looking at his shoulders and his rotation, nothing's working around there. So straight away, you know, we can see balance the shoulders and breathing are his top movement priorities, no matter what we do. Uh, everything else kind of fits itself, fixes itself further down the chain. But we always start from top, reading down to the bottom in everything we do right now. So, Josh, you add anything to this? Anything else you, put, you popped up this morning? No, uh, no, that's right. So balance and shoulders are your sort of your top priority to look at. Again, algorithm-wise, we go top down to the bottom. 
yeah. in terms of trying to trying to fix stuff. Exactly. And then in terms of for those who don't know cricket, cricket's a very much rotation sport. So when he's batting, mm. he wants to be side on like this a lot. And he has to rotate the body like this to get some power here. So a lot of batsmen can't look right and left. They have such tight shoulders here that it forces them to do this, makes them collapse over the front, which means they're in a bad position to play the shots and they get out and don't score as many runs. So from a cricketing percent performance sense, straight away, this needs to be addressed to improve his on-field batting performance, um, from what I know. So when we're looking at this, yes, he's got some external hip rotation issues. Yes, he's got rotary stability issues. But from a point of view of corrective, we're not worrying about that. Now, we don't, we can't do everything at once. It's not a shotgun approach. It's like a sniper approach first. We start from top, we work bottom, we take two or three priorities first, and straight away, balance, shoulders, and rotation are the three things we need to fix. And what we know from experience is shoulders often impact the hips. So sometimes you can improve shoulder mobility and it'll improve your hip mobility. Uh, with that, uh, anything else, Josh, to add to that? Oh, that's it. That's good. Cool. And we got a layer 2.1. Um, so yeah, so straight away, lots of reds um, on basic strength. So we're looking from top to bottom, plank and glute bridge. Okay, glute bridge, he can hold his glutes are basic strong enough, but his plank and his active bar hang are nowhere to be seen. So we know for anybody to be strong, they need to have a, a strong core, or basic core strength, and they need to have basic grip strength, um, which shows from here. So these two things are off completely. So straight away, what's he going to be doing? Core strength and grip work in his whole thing. And he comes so to the, lunges. So the one one caveat to that is he didn't have a bar to hang from. So okay. couldn't strictly speaking test that. However, he said he had done, whether it was at a, a gym or previous, he had done it previously and he, he said he couldn't do 60 seconds. So I've taken it from that. There you go. There you go. Um and then, obviously, bodyweight split squats. Yes, uh, elevated split squats, sorry, like, like Bulgarian split squats, you could do that. But when we add it into an, a simple airborne lunge, you didn't have the stability to do it. So single leg work, stability work is an issue here in strength. Uh, so The only do. person never to do the 20-minute walk test. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> first yeah. time it's ever been blank. <laughs> it's true, yeah, exactly. So the first time it's ever been blank on the 20-minute walk test. And then, obviously, his 2K row, which is what he could do, and he liked rowing, was 8.53 which um, to get into Amber, for you, guys, for you guys out there, for male, it needs to be sub eight minutes, 10. So quite a lot of work to do in that. Question is, did we go to layer 2.2? No, we didn't. Because for those who don't know the system, if there's loads of reds everywhere and mostly reds, we don't progress further past 2.1 until we have the basics in place first. So 2.2 is completely blank. Because uh, he hasn't earned the right to go up the system to um, uh, to perform better. Because if we create a or we start loading more weight with dysfunction, it's going to go pop. We need to address the basics first to help him move forward and pass that. So, and that's and that's why, as you said, the strength score is slightly skewed because he doesn't get the uh, two point two. Exactly. So, bear that in mind. That's what we did. So, Josh. Tell me, as I'm pull, pulling up the uh, sheet, what were your considerations for writing the, the programme when you started doing it, doing it from? So, obviously, number one is plantar fasciitis. He's in pain. He's had plantar fasciitis for 15 years. So, you know, outside of the system, you've got to look at that first, trying to get him out of pain is yeah. uh, top priority. And then, obviously, you go to breathing, balance, shoulder mobility, are three things to get somewhere in the program. But again, that's we're talking ideal world. I would just want him to do a mobility program, really. Mm -hmm. But we got 12 weeks. He's a 12-week client initially. He wants to get back to playing cricket at a, you know, well. He wants to recover well, be more efficient, play better. So you've also got to give him what he what he enjoys as well. And he likes rowing and he loves kettlebells. So there you go. And and obviously he's a fatless client. So there's a there's a hell of a lot going on. There's a hell of a lot there going is, on. To, there is a lot to consider. There is, there is a lot going on. And for those who aren't aware, of what we do is anybody who new comes into the program, they we always work on a 12-week basis. So 12 weeks, they come in, they assess at the start, they do the program, we reassess after 12 weeks. It's always 12 weeks. 
begin with because we're going to see how people respond to us now we're going to see how well they perform and if, they, if they're keen and if we get on well with them they like the results and, and we want to keep them on for longer after that but it's always a 12-week block start finish the starting point end point assessments before assessments after the show the stuff that we're doing is working we can go hey here it is or if it's not working we need to find out why it's not working uh it's really good actually because when i when we went on to the thing this morning, pull up Ryan's program, which is like making sure that we follow our system properly. And then you can see Josh is right written this program, True Coach, and you can see the notes underneath it. So Ryan. Yeah. And by, by the way, I haven't gone back in and edited this. So genuinely, no. I did write this. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> so it's me as me as a boss checking up on Josh's work. He's actually following the protocols, which is which is fantastic. So, you know, here's, here's all about fit to play. Return back to the program. And you can see we've written the priorities. We've written the goals and we've written the phase one focus of what we're trying to do uh, to move them forwards. Uh, and that allows us to find this program at a later date. Because if some people have similar issues, we can pull it up at a later date and go. Down. So that's how we've named it and that's how we've approached it in here. So I, th I think before you go on to the, the program, James, you can see phase one focus written here. What you have to also take into account is Rehan was training, doing his own training, and he was training four to five times a week already. If he'd been only training two or three times a week, then the program would have to be quite different to what I actually wrote. Then you'd really have to start distilling it down into serious priorities. Um, I, I had actually had a, a lot more options because he did train so much. Because if you look, I've given two mixed modal, two kettlebells, shoulder mobility and plantar fix. He's got a hell of a lot going on. This is mm. a busy program. Um, but we had the advantage that he did train a lot. So... Yeah, and, again, and that's, that's perfect, right? Because we all, he's a high performance client going through all the high performance assessments. Therefore, we know he can handle it and has more time and more commitment, more commitment to do all these things as well. So it all builds into this one big picture of who he is and what he's doing. So again, through the consultation, getting to know who, what he is, his background, his experience, you know, the fact his mindset is high performance, it's all led into what we're about to share with this program right now. So some of you may think, well, wow, that's a lot going on. A lot of people who can do this can handle it. Uh, if they're committed and they're able to do it. So let's pull up uh, very quickly what we have here. So as you can see, uh, we have a seven-day program, essentially, because day six was essentially his day to play cricket, right? Wasn't it, Josh? Mm -hmm. so, play yep. cricket. so he's yep. doing all this stuff every single day. As Josh said, you know, we've got kettlebell circuits, we've got two mixed modals pieces, and we've got shoulder mobility with his daily plantar fasciitis fix on the middle here. Um, well, again, if for those who aren't aware of, of how we program design, we always do the same same model. It's like lubricate, activate, workout, stretch, the laws of all workouts. We lubricate the joints, mobilize, activate the muscles, we do the workout, and then we stretch. So as you can see here, that we're, we're lubricating at the start, we're activating, and guess what we're doing at the end? We're stretching, right? So as you can see, this is his workouts in the middle. Activation work is a lot of weighted breathing. So adding his breathing stuff to get into it. Uh, Bandages the dead bugs, half kneeling stuff for rotation and shoulder work and activations. And then we've got basic kettlebell complexes through the middle here with a bunch of other things tied into it with a bit of abs at the end because he needs some core work. And who doesn't like an ab finisher to finish off with? Well, again, it's about keeping the client happy, getting them a bit sweaty at the end. Um, plus, it's good core work as well, you know, because obviously, as we saw in the uh, thing, he needed to improve his core strength. Yep. So, again, you can see what's going on. I don't need to talk you through the exercises. You know, that, that's just what we, you know, that's the more the tactics. We'll show you the strategy of how we're doing it. But that's how we've approached it. Again, his daily plan to, fi plan to fix is down here. We'll talk about that separately. Um, but that's what we were, like, focusing on here. Now, day two is his mixed modal. Uh, we're adding, he, had, he needs some rowing technique work uh, as well. So we go for some rowing technique basic training here. And his mixed model is set time for 30 minutes, repeat the following, row 250 meters, kettlebell cleans, plank, repeat for 30 minutes. And he's working at about 70, 75% of his capacity. Nice and easy, repeatability, building up some volume so he can help him recover fast enough. Also, he's in the middle of cricket season. So we don't want to go too hard, too fast, too soon because he's playing cricket. And if we make him too tired for this, he's not going to perform for his... Uh, sport that he's partaking in so um shoulder and aslr work so he needs a lot of shoulders but josh did a day dedicated to all this uh, as you can see here uh josh will talk through a little bit about this um so probably a few clients uh, who are on this recognize this um mobility like they, sh they 
sort of shoulder and ASLR goes kind of hand in hand, as we say, working from top uh, top down. Um, so obviously that was a, that was one of his priorities. And underneath it, that was a very much a dedicated mobility day because if you scroll down, he's also got his daily plan to fix as well uh, as that on that day. Exactly, and that's that's the thing. I think there's we have out of all the stuff we've done, there's certain exercises and certain moves that work for shoulders better than ever. And you've mm. got to release first of all. You've got to release all the areas around here. You've got to release um, pec minor, infraspinatus, uh, long head of the tricep, sub scap. Those are the four key things to release. And then you can start mm. getting the range of motion. So a lot of T spine rotation work. Uh, there's this internal external FMS drill that we love, which helps to, um, get the scapula moving for, uh, well again. Wall slides, the arm bar. You know, you can see on here what we're doing, but it, it's. You know, we're definitely releasing the muscles first, then mm. we're starting to get the movement back and then putting weight onto that movement to help open everything up. So there, there is a strategy behind it uh, with what we're trying to do. And then likewise with the ASLR work, but we always pair them together because they do go hand in hand. Your your internal shoulder rotation affects your your active straight leg raise, essentially. Uh, for those who are not sure what the active mm. straight leg raise is, we can, you can Google it, Google active straight leg raise test FMS, you'll get an idea of what it's about. That's the best way for today. But we always pair it up together. Then we go on to day four, which is more aerobic work. Again, look how easy it is. You know, it's it's simple stuff. It's not, you know, it's nothing too crazy. At the end row, 15, 20 minutes at 141 beats per minute. So he's using heart rate recovery. That's his uh, math level. We want a nice, easy aerobic row. It's nothing too complex. It's nothing too hard. We're not trying to teach him to go all balls to the wall. Out. We're just trying to build up his volume to allow him to recover fast enough and not affect his cricket, right? So, so that one was aimed a little more at fat loss side of things. One, he loves kettlebells. He needs a little bit of uh, fat loss, so slightly more intense, I'd say, on that one. Uh, and as we all, you know, you, you know, uh, kettlebells are good for fat loss, so that's why we've uh, stuck that in there. So, slightly higher, more intense day there, I would say. Nice. But obviously, yeah. again, finishing with some aerobic work for to improve recovery. Yeah, basically, which is the key over there. Then we got his, we'll come back to his plantar fasciitis fix then. Then we got a day after cricket where it's another mixed modal row where it's light and easy. Right, row 500 meters, easy kettlebell swings, get up for 30 minutes, work at 70% to 70% maximum. That's it. So easy, super simple. We're not trying to kill him. It's recovery to allow him to perform better for his other games of cricket during the course of the week. So that's kind of how we program it together. <coughs> um, but the fact is, is we could do all this as a part of the program, but the great thing was he was able to do the daily plan to fix and like focus on that every single day so as you can see this josh gonna talk through the plan to fix so this is um based off perry nicholson's work and we sort of with in conjunction with perry what you say james three or four years ago now yeah probably we 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 had a lot of good mobility stuff i i would say but then we, we, as always, we want to learn from uh, from the best. Who we think Perry is one of the best in terms of improving uh, pain and getting people out of pain. So we had a few hours with Perry and sort of redefined our whole mobility system and based pretty much everything off his uh, rail, which is release, activate, integrate, locomote, um, which that follows exactly. So self myofascial release, Chapman points in this case for activation. Um, if you don't know what Chapman points are, the neuro neurological lymphatic points, would you would you call yeah, them? Is that the best way to describe them? Yeah. Like um <laughs> so, excuse me, but your, your head is in your ass. Basically what I'm saying is your 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 glute activation is in the back of your head here. That that's yep. one of them. Um what is it abs are in or on your inner thighs is also yeah it's based on Chinese Chinese medicine and, and stuff like that. Then rolling on the ground um to make to keep the brain nice and safe which is the integration and then emerging pattern for locomotion so we're going nice and easy from ground up uh and then the, the idea is that it makes it stick so we're not just doing mobility for the sake of it and hoping for the best it's the, the idea is that you, you do it and it will it will stick and then you won't have to do it again that's yeah, that, that's the that's, point that's the big thing a lot of people do can, will release stuff like, I'll, I'll give an example on shoulders like i saw a video yesterday something I'm, again using cricket as an example hey this is a great way to release your shoulder any tight shoulders and they say get a ball put it into the front here and just roll around here 
great, that does release it, but it doesn't mm. stick, right? So yeah. you've always got to work in pairs, right? Or, th- or, the, or the whole junction of the shoulders, like front, back, underneath, <laughs> tricep, the tricep, because it works this whole, and even sort of here, you know, like it's this, uh, you've got to work it all together and then pattern it again and add load onto it. So there's no point just doing something and just like, yeah, it feels good for 10 seconds because in, in an hour or two, it's going to go back to feeling exactly the same thing. Yeah. It's exactly the same here. And also, as part of his daily fix, look at all the breathing work he's doing throughout his workout. So we haven't, you know, there's no specific breathing work on here, but the diaphragm is a big part of plantar fasciitis. So we're working on throughout the whole program. Is that right, Josh? Yes. Well, it's all in, in the uh, warm-ups and activations, all the breathing work and obviously breathing work throughout uh, his plan to fix and mobility and everything. So yeah, it's all sort of in there. And again, if you scroll back up um, in terms of like balance, you might wonder where that is. Well, again, it's sneakily in the warm-ups, neck nods. Uh, if you on, on mixed model row mark two is something for balance. Um, get back ups is for balance. Um, what else? Rocking is for balance. Rolling, <laughs> so, five, rolling yeah. is for balance. So yeah, it's 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 in there, but the client doesn't necessarily know it's in there. So sneak in. So but this but this this shows the beauty of hybrid coaching okay, in, on so many different levels. This is this is what we can do with people online, and they can do so much more than just working here. Again, it takes time to build this program out. You know, it, we're we're quick with it now because we have so many systems in place to make it happen. But the point is, we can build this program out, and he can follow it for as long as needed. It's, it's been for twelve weeks. It's been fine for twelve weeks, and. The results, well, well, we'll show you now in a second. Anything more you can add, Josh, on the workouts and the, and the um, what we've done? Uh, just, just back to the plantar fix. Uh, um, you know, as you said, with, the, with that shoulder mobility in cricket, as you say, it's it's all great releasing it, but unless you teach the brain and the nervous system that it's safe and it's okay to to let go, it's just going to tighten up again. So, our, the idea behind our system, basing it off Perry's work, is that we want to get it to stick because we don't want you to be doing mobility forever. Yeah. We haven't, you know, we're not, um, we're not geniuses and we haven't completely solved everything. And it does take a hell of a lot of time, as you'll see when we go to Rehan's um, scores now. I haven't solved everything, but we've made yeah. good progress. Exactly. Which is good. Um, any questions from anybody so far before we show the results of what they, what he got from the thing? Bruce, Terry, anything you'd like, you guys like to ask or question? Everyone's camera's off, so I can't even tell. <laughs> Can't tell they're, they're still awake. They, they might have fallen asleep now. <laughs> let's assume all is well in the hood. Anyway, so there you go on here. So let's look at um, the results. No questions from Terry. There we go. No questions. <laughs> there we go. So let's pull up um, Rehan once. So let's show his score before. All right. So we've got that. Let's move up here. So he's 29% and what we have here. And then score number two. Side by side is we've got 43%. How about that? Can you guys see it? There we go. Side by side. Can you see it okay, Josh? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Let me move that a little bit tighter here. That's it. Just move that one in a little bit. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So let's look at things from a, a, a very simple overview. So we can see now this score has gone from 29% to 43%. Uh, and that's not just because of his 11% rise in cardio. Let's just happy at that. So we can see the top left, health has gone from 36 to 45. Movement uh, is at 47% to 70% uh, the difference. Uh, we've gone 0% to 11% because you'll see now that you could do the walk test, right? So the walk test carried over and then strength has gone from 14% to 24%. So from a, just a pure numbers and basic stats thing, He's improved, right? He's improved. We already know that he's now in less pain for plantar fasciitis, so that we're already on to a winner. So if he is somebody that says, hey, I'm not quite sure if I've improved anything, we can show, well, actually, you have. Look how well you have performed at this level. Anything you add to the scores, Josh? Uh, no. So obviously, you know, as you say, his scores are improved. But now when you dive in deeper, um, the I'd say the, the scoring system, it's not perfect, probably. Yep. Uh, but what you can you, you need to look at the numbers in more detail as well, which you obviously, as the coach, you do do. So although some of them haven't changed in color, you can see that the actual there is actually improvement. Um, yeah. Although some some of them are still amber, some of them are still red, but there is improvement. 
So, yeah, so I think straight away, we look at like here now. So the breath hold test has improved by five seconds, um, which is clear. So he's down to amber. And then obviously we've still got two reds. Um, steps, daily steps have improved, which is great. Weight is down four pounds. Body fat is down 3% roughly, uh, give or take. And his waist is down 2.5 centimeters. Uh, with his waist to height ratio down, down to 0.54. Uh, same ice test went down 0.5, but I think we recalculate re that. That's that's by the by. But the point is, you know, basic numbers on the score things. Okay, we've improved. Mm -hmm. I still like to see his sleep time improve because I think that'd be a massive help in everything he does. That's 2.5 inches, by the way, not 2.5 centimeters. 2.5 in inches. Was it? Well, if that's yeah. the case, there's an issue with the way scoring system because I thought it was a um, in centimeters. No, I don't, I don't think so. Waist should be four, should be in red. That's what I've just noticed. There we go. Anyway, um, there, you go. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, right. So there you go. Uh, right. So that's here. Let's go to layer one on the left hand side. This is before. Look at the top balance 24 and 8. What have we got on the side? I, by the way, I actually don't know these numbers yet. This is the first time I'm seeing it too. So, oh, look at that. Look at that. Just bring, just bring the left hand side of that one in a little bit. Uh, there we go. There we go. Right. So, Balance is more, it's both an amber now, uh, slightly more even, the less, less ski whiffed, not perfect, but we're still better. But I think the big thing is, though, is the uh, the greens and the shoulders and rotation. Look at that. We've only got the one no on the right hand side, which is very typical for cricketers, actually, because they mm -hmm. throw a lot with their shoulders. There's a, so much gunk and crap in here. It's always fine. And I'm a good example of this always. So if you see this, you know, this yeah, we might. We, we, I mean, the thing is, we might, we might never get that right side green exactly. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty hard thing, but you know, alongside this, even though we scroll down there, the hips weren't a major priority for us, we didn't prioritize it that much because we we're focusing on the top end. But if we scroll down the bottom, ankles have suddenly improved and look at rotary stability like. That's massive. You know, Roger Swill is a huge part of component of what we're trying to do and improve on. So he's gone from not being able to do the Roger stability test to yes, he can. And we've gone up, up an inch on ankles uh, and two inches on the other ankle. So mm. uh, it's a huge factor in what was going on here. And we go into hinge and squat. Deep squat sit test is probably pretty much the same. That's all the same. So all in all, all in all, from a movement perspective, you can see that's how his numbers have improved. So for us, we'd revisit back well, this is, I'm just spe speaking out loud. Now, Josh, you're the one in charge of this now. But the point is, I'd say, okay, we've, we've approved, improved the shoulders. Next in line, we'll be looking at the hips, potentially. Mm -hmm. And still working that balance. Yeah. Maybe having a look at that right side of his uh, of his shoulder. So we, we can move on and progress his program accordingly and know exactly what we're trying to do. With lots of things happening here. So in terms of strength, 2.1 over here on the left. And 2.1 on the right. So we've got full yeses um, under squat and motor control, which is great. Still can't behind from a bar. He still can't do his two-minute plank, which is surprising. Well, again, uh, bar hang, he hasn't, he can't do it because he hasn't got anywhere. Uh, and he yeah. didn't give me a note on that this time. He might be able to do it this time. Who knows? His plank, this is, again, this is where you can look into true coach and the numbers. His plank's gone from 110 to 135, I think it is. So although he hasn't hit the two minutes, it's still improved. Cool. But he uh, can now do air ball lunges. So yeah. it's, he's got good. stability in his legs and everything there, which is fantastic. And yeah. then in terms of the road test, again, we, you know, to be really good at the road test, you've got to do some hard stuff as well. We haven't done any hard stuff. All we've done is simple, easy volume, right? We haven't even mm. got 2K potentially. We've just done like long, but easy volume. And already he's gone from 8.53 to 8.31 with some basic technique and some basic... Yeah. Um, work volume capacity. Yeah, so that so the rowing wasn't in with the two K row test in mind to try and specifically improve that. It was to improve his uh, performance on the field in his recovery, which obviously you know he's improved by over twenty seconds. So we're in a we're in a good place. And Rehan himself obviously was feeding back to me, messaging saying how much better he felt. Obviously, at pain, he he recovered really well from his cricket matches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, is it? And in, in, terms, in terms of cooking performance as well, which is probably the most important part of what we're doing, because this is just a small part of the puzzle. The ultimate goal is to play, play matches longer. He's scoring more runs. He's scoring more runs and he's helping his team win the game. So 
I think, you know, overall, that's his priority and it's all helping towards that. Um, again, in terms of those doing the HCP and learning about, or will be learning about um, elevating your status and crafting your core message and your core message canvas, it's about elevating your status. His status, he wants to be the guy who helps his team win every, every week. So are we helping him do that? Yes. He then becomes a big, you know, raving fan of us because we're helping him do that and achieve his goals. So there you go. So just side by side one more time. Score on the left, 29%. Score on the right, his new one, 43%. We can see improvements across the board. However, still a long way to go. <laughs> still a long way to go. He knows that, but it's a starting point to help us get to where he wants to get to. Um, and there you have it. Like a very quick idea of what we're trying to do. Now, Josh, in terms of what, you, what you're going to do with the program for him next, well, because again, this is one of those things where we're talking about it, we discuss about it, we see, okay, is there improvements? I'm making sure that Josh does his job properly. So congratulations, Josh. <laughs> Seems good in, in this area right now. But in terms of like is writing his next program, what do we say is the priorities next moving forward? Um, I think we should also bring Terry and, and Bruce in on this as well so they can discuss it. But uh, for me, I'd say probably towards the end of his program, he dropped the ball a little bit on his nutrition. Uh, I mean, that could be down to a lot of factors, busy life, playing more quick, et cetera. Uh, I'd probably try and prioritise that a little bit more to improve his health mm -hmm. scores and then just continue along the same vein. Right shoulder is still a priority, but then again, now we can look at hips. Uh, so try and improve hip mobility um, and get him, you know, just carry on getting him stronger, uh, I think, with yeah, with his with his cricket and anaerobically fitter, of course, as well. Yeah. I think so. Well, that's a, that's a good plan. Be interesting to see where he goes, and I think we're probably doing it in a, in twelve weeks' time, or maybe or even longer than that, depending on when we reassess this time. We don't we don't always assess after twelve weeks. It depends on the client, but we always assess in the first week and twelve weeks on when they first come to us to show them the, the improvements that they're doing. So I think it might be an interesting case to just show them like when we when we do the third assessments later on in the year. Hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, he wants to work with us. Yes, indeed. So there you go. Cool. Um, right. I open up to the floor. Any questions? Any questions at all that anyone would like to ask us to make sure that this has been a good, this is quite new. So please give us feedback. This is, this is not something we often do. We're just opening up the, uh, what's the, is it the kimono in Japan? They both open up the kimono, the doors and slide. Opening doors. the kimono. <laughs> the kimono is the toilet, isn't it? That's the no, no, kimono is the, the, the jacket. His jacket. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, I was about to say Komodo. That's a dragon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Komodo? <laughs> oh, I know, who knows? I'm making stuff up as I go along now. Anyway, we're holding back the curtains and giving you insight to what we're seeing when we're reassessing clients' data and how they're, they're doing. So there you have it. Um, Bruce and Terry are unnaturally quiet. It's just concerning. So hopefully they're yeah. okay. Um, Let's just say that they're making lots of notes. How about that? <laughs> I so. oh, Bruce's, Bruce's mute, 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 audio is off mute then. Is that, was that a question coming from Bruce? No, it wasn't a question. I was just letting you know we are still here, and or I am still here and awake. I assume Terry is as well. <laughs> Thank God for that. And that's been really interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank God for that, Terry. This is what, by the way, Terry. This is what we do with your work as well. By the way, just just as FYI. I know I've been very fascinated to see behind the scenes and see how it works. So yeah, extremely excited. Um, I think the hardest thing for me as the client is, is understanding that there is a reason why the program is written the way it is, since I tend to sometimes be very creative and like rearrange it quite a bit <laughs> to my um, schedule. <laughs> yeah, but schedule, schedule wise, that's not usually a, a, a problem. We always say, you know, if you can't do something, if you're moving around the workouts, then generally that's, that's no issue most of the time. The, the only time that might become an issue if somebody's doing a really intense strength program and you definitely do not want them doing two days back to, or three days back to back um, due to recovery, but generally not an issue moving workouts around. Would you say James? No, not at all. It happens. Life happens um, yeah. most of the time. But again, if, if we take using Rehan as an example now, I wouldn't want to move his workouts around too much because it crickets on the Saturday. So yeah, <clears throat> So if he's doing his hard intensity ones on the Saturday, on the Friday, it'll affect his, his Saturday's performance. So if there's if there's an event or competition in place, then you got more of a thing. But if there's no event or sporting competition in place, then absolutely it's, it's not too much of an issue. And sometimes it's natural to do it. Or even, you know, in an ideal world, I'd have AI 
calculating people's heart, HRV recovery rates and stuff like that to mm-hmm. see how well they can handle a certain day, which may happen in a future bit of uh, software we may release at some point or not, um, to tell us whether which, where they should change workouts back to back. So mm. that's, a, that's yep. a really good point. But there you go. That's uh, an insight into the world of strength matters and program design and, and how we approach it from our perspective. There you go. Indeed. First, anything, anything you want to add to finish off with, mate? No. Who was that? Bruce Hum. What? <laughs> I was saying, anyone else? No. Everyone's all good. No, no. All, I'm all good. I'm all, all good. is good. Right. Okay, guys. In that case, uh, thank you very much for joining us in this rather impromptu, uh, different client QA this week. I hope you find it useful. Please drop a comment below or let us know what you think about it. Uh, and yeah, and maybe we'll do it again sometime if people enjoyed it and do another case study. So, as always, thanks, Josh. Appreciate your hard work on your birthday. Uh, <laughs> today. Uh, get back to work you know keep working hard and then uh, I'm, having, yeah. I'm, having, I'm, I'm, I'm having the rest of the day off now that's it I'm done no no not allowed <laughs> and, um, but there you go insight into how we help we are uh, and we'll keep you posted cool as always ciao for now to say again there we'll see you next time